So we're going to talk about securing on a budget. Before we start, one of the things that I want to do is just get a little bit of user interaction here. So out of the room, who's deploying security devices, tools, things like FireEye, Snort, a SIM? No one? Got lots of blinky shinies. <laughs> yeah. Got some blinky shinies. Hands, hands. Come on, hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so a few. A few. So, so a few people. Um, and I'll have some questions as we go through. Just to keep it interactive, see how we're reaching people, see if we're making a difference. I'm kind of curious. Real quick, a disclaimer. We're both employed. However, we're not representing our employers. Uh, we're going to be suggesting tools, products, things you can bring into your environment, into your home. We're not responsible for any of them. Sorry, that's if, not allowed at no hackers. If so. it, <laughs> if it, no responsibility or responsibility? No, well, you're not talking a part of your employer. Yeah. You have to. You're always talking about your employer. Then I uh, work for Mubix over there. <laughs> so direct all complaints to him. <laughs> so if you guys break your environment with this, we're not responsible. Use precaution. Play with it. Test with it. And then go from there. When did we ever use precaution? Before having kids? I, I don't know. We're getting past it. So me, my name's JC. There's my Twitter handle, former Marine. I uh, do the forensics, malware analysis, some social engineering here and there. Former. 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 It means that I'm not out there breaking my back anymore. But I'm ready to be called up. Where's the rest of the devil dogs? I got a couple. All right. There we go. Right. No, there's no such thing as an ex-marine. <laughs> Fishnet security. I'm actually from San Diego. Drifter over here. Been working at a client. Uh, hopefully, I get to go home soon. And this is Adam. I'll let. Um, so that's just a real uh, play on words. I don't know. If I see a couple people are here at uh, B Side DC. Uh, the keynote, you know, is mentioned in top 20 sands. Top 20 can, or. Uh, Jobs, the security maven, if we just mess around. Um, I love open source tools, that's kind of where this came up from. Uh, I used to work in government contracting, um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have or do, um, where you basically bought whatever you want. So I moved over to a uh, public company where security really wasn't their main concern, it was selling their product. Um, so this is where a bunch of that comes from. So expectations for this, we're going to go through a list of tools. Yay tools, who likes tools? All right. We're going to discuss quickly what it's for. This is going to be a quick sampler. One of the things Adam and I noticed was we were finding a lot of new things. Who here has NetFlow? Who here does not have NetFlow that wants NetFlow? <laughs> One? Two? Who doesn't know what NetFlow is? All right, we'll get it. There we go. Participation. We're going to make an effort to discuss some of the benefits, however, not, we're not going deep down into some of these things. That's up to you to take back home, spend your uh, nights researching it. And then uh, enjoy the talk. Uh, we're going to have the slide deck link at the end, so don't worry about making notes with all these tool names. Some that we noticed was these appliances that you buy commercially are very expensive. Sometimes you don't know if they're the right fit for your organization. With that being said, one of the ways to find if they're the right fit. And is Josh from B-Sides here? There he is. We were talking about this the other day. Companies want that commercial support. So you have to go invest right away. But you don't know if this is a good fit. One of the things you can do is start small. Put this in. Don't make it a critical part of your infrastructure. One of the things we're going to talk about is firewalls. That's something you might not want to play around with. That's pretty important in your environment. So maybe negate that, save that for the home network. So budget's not always approved. We can't always afford something. This is something we can put in there in the short term. And then look to open sources a degree of security for our organizations and several relying on the commercial products. And as we grow, start to tap onto the commercial products. Question? If your company's big enough, vendors will loan you the gear for 90 days, 60 day evaluations. Just keep extending it for a while. <laughs> and after three years, you can finally send in the quote. You could do that. Uh, if this is totally not for you, we put cat pictures. Who doesn't like cat pictures? Cats are evil. <laughs> Liars. Liars. So, agenda, we're going to go through some firewalls, some proxies, uh, VPNs, IDS, packet capture and flow, vulnerability scanning, host security. Who's already excited because they didn't know this could all be accomplished for free? One person, all right. We're, we're, we're 
get in there? There's some cat pictures for you. So I'm going to turn it over to Adam, let him go off. Oh, Thanks, buddy. All right. So as uh, JC said, uh, we're kind of going with a top-down approach. If you want to uh, think of it that way, start out with the, your exterior, work your way into the interior. Um, first up, we got an IP fire. Uh, I don't know if anybody's really ever heard of it. Um, I just found out about it about four months ago. Um, it's great for your small office, home office, your home, if you want to get above DDWRT, but you don't know where to go. You don't want to you know, go buy like a ASA 5510 or some shit like that. Um, very easy to pick up, you just install it. If you have a netbook and a USB Ethernet card, you can install it. Works uh, probably take you about a half hour to get up and running. Um, the good thing about this is you're able to use it as an access point. You don't need another access point as long as you have the card and whatever uh, piece of hardware you're using as your uh, firewall. Um, it actually has a Snort integrated into it. So again, if it's something at home, if you want to play with um, Snort, but you really don't know how to compile it, put it on a machine, distribute it, um, because I know it's a bear to deal with if you're not using a distribution that uh, already has it installed. Um, and finally, Squid also is uh, with it, so you can use a proxy. Um, Squid, I, know, I assume most of you have used it. Uh, pretty great proxy, it's just really hard to set up. Uh, this kind of makes it easier. Just a uh, screenshot of kind of what you're looking at. Um, you don't really have too much back end you need to play with. Um, <laughs> everything's pointy and clicky, uh, makes it really easy to use. Uh, another one, uh, PFSense, I'm sure a lot more of you have heard of it. Um, you could probably employ this in an enterprise environment. I've never actually seen it in one. Everybody's using Junipers, uh, you know, your Cisco products. Um, one of the things to note about this is that it has multiple VPN options, whereas IP Fire only gives you open VPN. Yes, sir. Free PSV based. Where did I put? Linux. 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 Top line, yeah. Oh, my God, you guys are going to kill me out of that. All right, so we'll just take... LI off there. <laughs> Call it a day. Um, I'll fix it later. It's uh, got a web based interface. There's the yeah. GUI. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, it's got a cap. What's that? There's an error in the code that's a web based GUI. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But uh, one of the, also the cool things about this it's got a captive portal. Um, if you wanted to set it up in an enterprise environment again, um, you can have people connect to it. Uh, they have to go through a portal where they actually have to log in. You're going to authenticate against LDAP with it too. Uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, high availability offering. Um, whereas IP Fire, you have one. If it goes down, you're you know, kind of fucked. Um, high availability, you can use PFSense. Uh, it'll fail over to the other one. And screenshot, you know, GUI, again, makes it easy for people that really don't know what they're doing to kind of either mess things up more or learn more. Um, Squid Proxy, I find it as the best one out there. Uh, like I said before, it's fairly confusing to set up if you ever looked at the config file for it. Um, lots of ACLs, lots of that other shit. Um, one of the neat things I just discovered, I don't know, about four or five months ago, you can use Clam AV with it, um, hook it up to that, so any kind of executable downloaded will actually be scanned before it hits your user. Um, again, like I said, config file, bear. OpenVPN, uh, everybody I'm assuming has heard about this, but uh, if you don't want to use Junipers and ASAs again as your VPN to get in the work, you know, you got some little office with 20 people, I'm sure they're not going to go out there and buy a you know, commercial VPN. This works well with the two products I just mentioned, PFSense and IP Fire. Uh, there's just packages that you install and you're up and running in a couple minutes. And we got that. You looked at security on you? I have. Um, you want my opinion on it, or yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, now you said that. I don't know. Uh, it's neat. It's awesome to get up and running, with, especially with Snort. Um, but the bad thing too is it makes it too easy to deploy. Um, I don't know. If you put it, implementing Snort from the ground up uh, is quite an experience. I've seen uh, the deployments where, or I've worked in deployments where nobody actually knows how the root of it is working. It's just that people are there to keep it running. Um, whereas Security Onion kind of you know, allows you to, to get it up and running without as much knowledge as you need to, to kind of. True, but at the same time, I mean, you could set up IP tables. Yeah, I'll go that way. <laughs> and you could set up IP tables out of your box and, and run that way. Um, but hey, you win some, you lose some. IDSs, right into it. Uh, so you got Snort, 
Suricata, uh, kind of the main ones. You know, there's also Bro IDS, but I didn't feel like mentioning it. Um, <laughs> so bro that hurts somebody. IDS. So again, quick sampler plate, basics. That's a little bit further down the spectrum. Forgot who I was speaking to. So. Um, uh, like I said, sort Suricata. Then you get your fretted. Um, Stort, probably the most well-known out there. Um, you know, now they're owned by good old Cisco there. Um, fairly difficult to deploy multi-sensor IDS, at least in my experience. I'm sure there's some smarter people out there that have deployed them and think it's the uh, easiest thing to do in the world. Um, you can use it just as well as your commercial source fire deployment since the you know half million dollar price tag of it, uh, if you can spend some time and you have the hardware to use it. Uh, multiple packages can be added to it, make it perform better, barnyard, pulled pork, uh, make it a lot easier to update your rules, kind of keep things running night, neatly. <coughs> Picture back at a snort, or just regular snort. Uh, Snorby. Uh, again, you know, you basically got Snorby and Squeal. Uh, Snorby's got a prettier GUI. Uh, most analysts love, you know, pretty things, so uh, this is the one we decided to talk about a little bit. Uh, it gives you the ability to parse out events um, and also integrate with OpenFPC, uh, JC will talk about that in a little bit, basically gives you full packet capture capabilities uh, for the cost of nothing, like we said. Pretty gooey. Got Sericata, uh, developed our uh, government's finest. Um, runs on basically anything you want it to. Uh, you can use your snort rules so you don't have to worry about purchasing a new license or a different license uh, if you already get a snort one. Uh, works with IPv6. I don't think anybody's really looking at that you know, too near the future. <laughs> Except for me, this guy in the back. <laughs> well, it's here for you. <laughs> Again, uh, a lot like snort. Know your audience. All right, man. Good. <laughs> uh, back to JC here. So right back into it. Uh, packet capture and flow. Who here does not have packet capture that wants it? We all have packet capture. Million dollar net witness? I do. You. I want to know all about it. All right. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Thank you for playing along. Open FPC, another open source uh, product. This integrates, you put a span on it, and it'll sit there and it'll just start pulling down all your PCAPs. You can go through it, search, query. This one uh, integrates with uh, Snorby. Snorby. So with your IDS from Snort, you're going through, you're looking at your events, and you get that one single packet that triggered the event. You can go through and pull the rest of that uh, full packet capture that you need to complete your investigation. Kind of cool, especially for no money. Simple API, easy to use, and gets onto Debian pretty quick without uh, a lot of compiling hassle. Does have a web-based front end, so you can't search through it by itself without using Snorby. Next thing we have is Moloch from the AOL guys. AOL, <laughs> come on. It's free, 100 hours, it's yours. Provides a great uh, full pack. Full. <laughs> great. <laughs> they will. A free, uh, free full packet capture program, deploy uh, on multiple servers, report back to one so you can have distribution, and then a uh, simple interface out of the box with that easy GUI. And here's kind of just a screenshot from the GUI to kind of show you some of the graphs that it has, so you're not just looking at raw packet captures like you will with OpenFPC. Uh, and then F-Probe. This is a big thing for me, doing forensics. NetFlow gives me a lot of data. It's a small program. You run it on a, a server, push a span to it. It's going to watch all your traffic, and it's going to generate NetFlow off of that. Has everyone heard? I'm, am I the only one that's excited by this? <laughs> all right. All right. Get motivated. Let's go. Very simple to use. Install it. Make sure it's set. Make sure you get your span port in there or your tap and you got NetFlow in your enterprise all of a sudden. This is probably the quickest one to just take straight back to your organization. Almost no critical impact with a spam port, unless you're already using it. Uh, helpful uh, in some situations, they don't have the right Cisco equipment, so you just can't do NetFlow. This is a perfect way to bail yourself out of that. Question? Uh, you mentioned that, uh, can you go back one slide? Of course. Uh, 
one more. Uh, you mentioned make it, you can run on the same box as open, open FTC or Moloch. Does that use, does it live sniff the same interface that they're sniffing, or does it read PCAPs that they're generating as they lay them down? And, and, and It'll read that interface. Okay. So put that thing in promiscuous, put a span right. to it, so you're good to go. Yeah, you could get really ghetto with this and put this all on one laptop and for your home network, play around with it. Scanning. <laughs> Who here does, uh, cat pictures, right? I knew I would get you. Who here doesn't have the budget to scan some of their hosts to pull off web app scanning? All right, good, good. Impact. Thank you, boss. <laughs> OpenVAS, Nessus, uh, Arachne. Who here hasn't heard of any of these? Anyone? All right, good, let's go. OpenVAS kind of evolved from Nessus, so you got a lot of the same uh, stuff in there. Uh, there's something called uh, Greenbone Security Assistant, which is a GUI end of this, so you get more of a easier to use interface, also free. It has daily updated feeds, uh, what's that, over uh, 30,000 total plugins like Nessus. One of the cool things, and I mentioned this earlier, people aren't really interested in things if they don't have that commercial support. This is one of the products that we found where there's actually third-party vendors that will support this. So you can use that to leverage it to bring it into your organization if that's the thing that's holding things up. Here's that uh, Greenbone GUI that I was talking about. Some config or search, deep scan for Linux, things like that. Uh, and that's this free feed. This is for your home, home network, your trying to play around with it. Uh, they also have a $2,500 a year. That's pretty cheap in an organization for a single scanner for a pro feed. It's definitely an option. Um, don't use it in the corporate environment. That's against their terms of service with that $2,500 version. Oh, I'm sorry, with the uh, free version for your home use. It also has a limitation on the version. You can't really get a we wouldn't know because we wouldn't put that on a corporate environment to see that limitation, but I do appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, here's uh, kind of how Nessus looks with that free feed. Uh, Rackney. You don't have the ability to bring in, you already purchased Nessus or some other vendor and now you need to do your web app scanning. So this is another hiccup for some organizations. This is a free web application scanner. It's not the uh, best, it's got a lot of false positives, but uh, a very active development group. It takes uh, only a handful, uh, not necessarily seconds, maybe a couple minutes, but gets you up and running really quickly. Um, put this out on AWS and off you go. Here's the interface for Arachne with some of our tests with it. And I'm going to turn it back over to Adam. This is it? Yeah. Are you not impressed? It's free! <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, uh, put this on real quick. Yeah, uh, OSSEC, it's your uh, basic hits, free. Uh, could do quite a bit. Uh, one of the things we use it for is to get more than just syslog from uh, our Linux servers, uh, you can also use it on Windows um, if you need an agent to push to a sim. Um, that's where it comes in real handy. Also works with Trend Micro if you have a heavy virtualized environment, you're probably using that as an antivirus. Uh, antivirus, I'm sure everybody basically knows all these. Uh, we just figured we'd throw a little blurb in there. Uh, Clam AV, low overhead, um, doesn't work as well as some of the more commercial products. Uh, we did want to note, I'm sure most people have seen that uh, Microsoft Security Essentials, Microsoft actually came out and said that they weren't really vested in their own product, so. <laughs> i go back to you, Ridge. Yeah. So, Cuckoo, malware analysis, we don't have FireEye. This is an awesome product. It's not gonna catch the anti-VM uh, malware. That's okay, some stuff uh, doesn't use that anymore because we're virtualizing our environments. Reporting's pretty thorough, and uh, it's a little bit of a trick to get up and running. That's Cuckoo, kind of the report right there. Wrap up, a lot of options. I hope some of this stuff is new to you. It gives you some to take home, play with, uh, take maybe back to your corporate environment, get it moving again, help stimulate the open source movement. 
it's a good start and it's definitely a great way to jump start uh, capability into your organization if it's not already there and then move to a commercial product if you need to any questions that's us on Twitter just hit us up on that we can talk it sounds like we're out of time here's the slides if you want to go through the list I promise that that's it I appreciate it